Hello, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Gray, and we're just plain living here. We're trying. I'm Peggy Burton. Good morning. Well, Peggy. Don't even start. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the throes. Of, we're all in the throes of South Jackson Goes Country. And today I'm going to have on the show Miss Harper Morris. I'm not in the show, but I'm directing. I'm the oldest person there, and she's the youngest person there. How old is, is, is Harper? Don't ask me how old I am. How old is Harper, I said. Harper's four years old. Four years and old. And she is a consummate dancer. She is something. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. You'll see Harper a little bit later on in the show. Oh, and I think uh, Jacqueline uh, Painter and uh, Samantha Waters is coming on. Are they coming today as well? I hope so. Oh, well, is it next week? I don't know. I think they're coming today, and they're my... Well, Total assistance. That is why I can do this. Yeah, yeah, because you know that's that's not a you know it's like you you hear people say it's it takes a village. Well, let me tell you what we South Jackson one. Goes Country, a three day show where you do three completely different shows. All the commercials are live commercials performed on stage and written by the staff over there, part of Peggy's crew, and you don't do that with. What, 60 kids on and off? I think we counted the number of people involved in this at 100 and something, and then that doesn't include a bunch of cloggers yeah. or, or a band that comes in. Right. And, and so, so there's 100 yeah, people to keep up least. with. Yeah. And props. How many, how many commercials are there this year, Peggy? Twelve. Twelve commercials. So you've got 12 completely different commercials that are vignettes, little vignettes about this company and, that take desks and chairs and hats and coats and batons and, and whatever. And do things. Uh, you know, we, so. And we, by the way, have a lot of gratitude to those people that sponsor because oh, we couldn't heavens, possibly yes. do this show without sponsorship. And uh, the things that need to be done at South Jackson, that money goes toward those things. Help, helping those things take place. Yeah. That's right. And Lee Gibson's doing the sound this year. Lee Lee's Gibson's back, and we're sound. glad to have him there. And we have a band that's from all over <laughs> Middle Tennessee. Yeah, for sure. And they are fabulous. Very good. Are band's fabulous. band's yeah. exceptional this year. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And that is the 10th, 11th, and 12th. And Peggy, the give us tell us when there's now there's a show out front. Oh, a lot of people don't really get it what what's going on. But at six o'clock the. Rhythm Express cloggers are out on the front lawn, not lawn, on the concrete pad. Right, brand yeah. new concrete pad. Oh, and it's fabulous. It's so pretty. And they'll be dancing. One or two singers will sing to give them a break. And inside we'll be selling Piggy's Place Barbecue. Uh -huh. And you can come and have your dinner while you watch a free show outside, or you can sit inside at a table and yeah. have your dinner. And it's pretty cheap. I think it's about five dollars. Yeah, and then and then it's there's it's never cheap. It's inexpensive. Yeah, there's a pre-show. <laughs> pre-show starts goes at on seven o'clock while the doors are open and people are coming in. Uh huh. And those are young people that have not uh, made it to the main show yet. But talented. But very talented, and that's. Miss Harper, she's going yeah. to be in the pre-shows. Yeah, well, and some of them, some of them are in both. We have some young people that are in both, that do both. because That's they're correct. in commercials and they might be part of a group, vocal group on stage during the big show. And the big show starts at seven. Seven thirty. We right. have Act One, Act Two. There'll be a break and uh, you for know, more barbecue. A lot for more barbecue. <laughs> a lot of our regulars are back. Marty Scott, love his singing. I, I, if I start trying to name everybody, I'll leave You'll somebody miss else. Them. But we do have some fabulous performers. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a great deal of fun, and, and please make plans to come to South Jackson Goes Country for uh, all three days, because there's three different, completely different, different shows. Well, they're completely different except for the commercials. Right, right. We, we don't write three commercials. commercials. No, no, we can't do <laughs> we that. We do. Can't we do, do a commercial, that. and that's the only consistent part. We open and close the same way, and then the commercials are the same. The same, and then the... Now, the, I can't say they're always the same, because different <laughs> actors are act vary what they do occasionally. Nothing live on stage <laughs> is always the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had to pull from my life in London and pull out Monty Python on one of the commercials. Oh, a lot of people won't get it, but it just makes me laugh out loud. Well, that's all, yeah. that's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> there was, I heard, uh, heard one of the, one of the, I can't remember who it was, but uh, Minnie Pearl. It's Minnie Pearl. She was talking about a joke and her husband asked her, said, 
why do you do that? <laughs> it's not funny. And she said, well, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, it makes me laugh. It makes me <laughs> laugh. And if I'm not happy doing what I'm doing, none of the rest of these people out there exactly. are going to be happy. So every now and then, as an entertainer or stage personality, you have to do something for yourself, too, you know, to, to, to where it's fun. And, you know, there's so much trauma in life, mental illness, the fires in California, my gosh, there's so many horrible things that go on. We really need to laugh at times to just get through it. I remember a line from a play I was in one time and it was, and if I laugh at any mortal thing, it is that I may not weep. And I think that's fabulous. I, right. just, I think that's a great right. motto. A smile's always good advice. Exactly. Anyway. Act nice. That's, my that's something we need to do more in society today than we do is uh, act nice and and Kenny Chesney has a song out right now that's number one called called get along get along yeah and Robin Majors who who's been working who's he's worked with everybody from Tim McGraw to Keith Urban to Montgomery Gentry uh, uh, one of the early bands one of the early rock rock and roll bands, uh, Marshall Tucker. He worked with Marshall, Marshall Tucker. Tucker yeah. He's working with Kenny Chesney now, and, uh, plays harmonica with Kenny from time to time. He's one of the writers on that song. Robin Majors from Telehome. Yeah, isn't that great? One of the writers on that song, and it's it, the whole thing is why can't we all just get along? Get you know, along, get along, sing a song, song ride, ride a boat, drink yeah. a beer, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a wonderful song, and uh, so we just need to all act nice to one another. Actually, we don't need to act nice. We just need to be nice, don't you think? Well, we don't need to be acting every time. No, you need to. You need not not just Try be just nice. Be you nice. need to. You need to be nice. Yeah, but like my granny said when she slapped me up the back of the head, I ain't gonna tell you twice. <laughs> yeah. Act nice. You oh, know? Yeah, I ain't gonna I tell think you there, twice. I think there's a song in there. Nah, I'm writing it right okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, you know the preacher's coming. Yeah, act, nice. act nice. You two little boys, you're in the floor. You got mud up to your ears. <laughs> Straighten up, because we got company yeah. coming. And you better act nice. And did she call you by two names if, when she was really upset with you? Do you have two names? I've just always known John. Powell and, did she, and Jerry did she ever Michael. Say, John Powell, no, get in no, here. No, 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 no. She just smack you upside the head and say, <laughs> "Boy." And dad, my daddy, that, that was my granny great. My daddy, you know, when he was mad, he wouldn't call you by your name. He'd call you boy. Boy. Then you'd straight Get up. in here, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you heard that, you knew you were in trouble. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting how parents parent. Yeah. Uh, when my father made a statement, he stood by it till death. Oh, of course. You know, he didn't vary his instructions if it was there. My mother was a little more wishy-washy. I could get around her, but I couldn't get around my dad. No. Well, and you have to think, that was back in the day when there was no denying that the male figure in the house was head of the household. Well, not really at my house, but <laughs> even though what he said, you know, stuck, yeah, my mother was no pushover. Well, no, I, I no, I'm not say saying that. that. But <laughs> but when he, your mother didn't go against him if if he was probably if he if was he real was right. strong if he was real strong <laughs> about something. Hey, and speaking about families and stuff like that, you know, I had an opportunity this weekend to do something fun. Uh, we've done it. My my wife's done it probably for 50 years. But uh, Dot Couch's sister, Martha, is a smart. Okay. And that's smart station. Uh, right before you get to Mac Man, well, and yeah. Judge Judge I, Smart was it? Yeah, Judge yeah. Smart uh, was a was a judge in the state of Tennessee, and owned that property right there. It backed up to the mountain, and their family's been on that property for over 200 years. Wow! And they have a, a smart reunion every year, and it is. A, they it, let you come and it's in. A, well, because well, because <laughs> Dot, see, Dot's kin, Martha, Dot's sister, married a Smart. Yeah. So, you know, so they, they all, came to the Morton reunion because Dot was a Morton and we go to the Smart yeah. reunion. And it's just, you know, the, the, the lineage of people that are there. And for years and years, Goes the family back. has met on that farm for over 200 years. It's beautiful. To have a reunion. And it's, and it's a lot of fun. And so uh, when I got back from the Smart oh, reunion. Written us a lo low coup. Yeah. Long hairs, no hairs. 
big bellies, flat bellies, in-laws, outlaws, preachers, teachers, a fallen angel or two, great grands in folding chairs, children and dogs on the ground, food on a flatbed, music and old tales fill the air under the tent. They travel from near and far to the smart family reunion. That's and that's what, you know, and that's what family reunions, a lot of people do that. And this is the time of year for that stuff. Yeah, and I, are people doing family reunions as much as they used to, you know, used to some, be? Some do and some don't. I mean, the Morton family reunion just sort of went by the wayside. We try to pull one off, but it, it's dwindling. Yeah, and I mean. One of the things is families are getting smaller, and so there's not as many people. Right. You know, back in the day, my dad was in a family with eight people, and I have a cousin that had maybe eight <laughs> children, but... We had two, and you know the families are getting small. Right, so but but still, many. but still, you've got some of those eight that are there still alive. Not many, not many, not many of those families with big, big nine, True. ten families. Yeah. Most of them are World War Two people, a little before that, and they they've gone. But they had a bunch of kids too, smaller kids. But that's all the grandkids and great grandkids, and you know, with a with a family that's that's kept their property for over 200 years, you know, to make it's almost like a pilgrimage, and it's fun right. to see the young ones who maybe didn't think it was that important in their teens and 20s, in they their 30s they're, they're now, they're are coming back to learn to learn about the family. Yeah. Well, that's sort of what they did in England. Yeah. They sent people to. Oh, where, where is this place? Now I can't think of the name of the place. But they would send their children over to learn to be farmers. I just can't I think know. of the name of the place. Certainly That's what happens to get older. Certainly okay? wasn't France. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we're out of time. We'll be back. Don't you go away. Pay attention to this quick commercial break, and we'll be, like I said, we'll be back with today's show. going to be fun. Russell's got your truck, man. Russell's got your truck. Keith Barnett here at the Russell Barnett Automotive Family, and we have sold so many new trucks, we've got over 100 pre-owned trucks to choose from. Any make, any size, any model. It's as easy as going to russellbarnett.com to check out our pre-owned truck inventory. And remember, why buy your next truck anywhere else? With the best selection anywhere, Russell's got your truck, man. All I have to do to think about what I was physically before and what, what I am now, and I don't ever want to go back to that original situation. The overall mission of the rehab team is always what is best for the patient and how we can facilitate maximum potential from every resident. Well, the most important thing to me is that I'm allowed to do whatever I need, want to do, you know. Everyday Miracles at Life Care Center of Tullahoma. All right, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, 24 years ago, I wrote, wrote a song for my wife, Fran. I got a call one day from Anchor Down Music in Nashville that said, Mr. Gray, your song has been cut by Ray Price. It's the, it's the title cut of his final album, and uh, we want to get information from you. And I said, well, I want to hear it. Email it to me. And they said, no, we can't do that. We don't want to take any chance of this getting out on the Internet, but you can come up here and listen to it. I'll put it on a loop. You can listen all day. So I went to Nashville to, uh, to listen to it, and I met Tim Daly, my writing partner from Dixon over there at Anchor Down Music. And we started a song that day, Chicken and Dumplings is the name of it, and uh, which we've had finished for a couple of years. And uh, Fran and I are singing Chicken and Dumplings in the country show on Sunday this year. And a couple of years ago, we sang the Ray Price song, Beauty Lies in the Eyes of the Beholder. And here's a little bit of that to let you know uh, what you can see when you come to South Jackson Ghost Country. I'm 65 years old, folks, this year. What do you think? I didn't make it that far. But I did, and I got a couple of things that happened to me in my 65th year. I got a new girl, a daughter. What do you think about that? Old man like me having a daughter, 65. Pretty strong, isn't it, huh? Well, here she comes up on the stage right now, and she's going to be playing with me along with another friend that's out there. Y'all come on up. Uh, the other thing that happened to me this year is 20 years ago, 
I wrote a song for my wife. This is Don Jones right here. And there's my lovely daughter, Cindy Gray, right there. And uh, my bride friend is going to come out right now. Twenty years ago, I wrote a song for her. Excuse me, on our 19th wedding anniversary. And this year, it was picked up by Ray Price, a legendary classic country artist, and it was the title. It is the title cut on his last album, Ray Died of Pancreatic Cancer in December. And uh, the name of the song is Beauty Lies in the Eyes of the Beholder. And I wrote it for her. And, uh, you know, it's not often that a man gets to sing with the queen, is it? <laughs> She's my queen all the time. he needs four more years to clean up the debt he inherited. Really, Gary, the primary obligation during David Pennington's terms 
was to benefit our schools. The people of Coffee County voted in a referendum to improve and build more schools. Were the people of Coffee County wrong? David Pennington doesn't think so. I support quality schools for our students and teachers. The other debt was from building a new jail. The state of Tennessee mandated that we build a new jail. Was the Coffee County Commission wrong to follow state law? David Pennington doesn't think so. Think of the enormous cost if we'd waited for the state of Tennessee to close our jail. We would have to pay other counties to house our prisoners. Taking care of our schools and our jail was the right thing to do. Vote for the candidate who believes in doing what's right for Coffee County. Vote for David Pennington for Coffee County Mayor. Here at Manchester Funeral Home, we know the importance of living and working in our local community because it's those families who we serve during their time of need honorably. We believe in supporting local business and offer only 100% Batesville caskets, the best in the industry and a driver of our local economy. If you want straightforward and fair pricing while working with the people you know, choose Manchester Funeral Home, serving your community since 1932. And pre-planning and pre-funding can be the best gift you ever leave your loved ones. Call us to pre-arrange. Manchester Funeral Home, our family caring for your family since 1932. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play. <laughs> what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. You're going to be so glad you hung around for this segment. I'm so fortunate today to have with me part of the Harper family, Miss, what's your name? Harper. <laughs> part of the Morris family. Her name is Harper. And uh, she's going to dance for us today. And she's the youngest person on South Jackson Goes Country. Next to her is her dad, Nick, and her big brother, Hunter. And uh, Hunter is here for support because he named his sister. Isn't that right? You named your sister Harper, and I love that. Okay, Harper, can you tell me what makes you want to dance? Um, tell them. What makes you, do you love to dance? Cupcake. Cupcake, is that a song you love? She just loves cupcakes. <laughs> oh, did you have a cupcake last night? Yeah. Is that what made it fun to be on the country show? That we got to have a birthday party and a cupcake. <laughs> are, you going to, are you going to dance today? And what's the name of your song? That's all right if you don't so you remember. Do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like this? Okay. Let's just go ahead and do the dance. I yeah. think now's a go good ahead. time. So give Get your ready. dad the mic. Get ready. Go ahead. Place. Point. Point to him. Three, two, one. So far. 
job. <laughs> Elton John's yeah, Tiny yeah, Dancer. Yeah, that was great, Harper. I love having you dance. Do you enjoy dancing every day? You just love to dance. We'll get them later. Nick, when did you know this child could dance? I uh, write it when she was a year old. We started dancing when she just almost danced yeah. right out of the womb, yeah. didn't she? We started her about she, when she was two and a half years old. And she's who does she study from? Uh, Ashley Wells at a Center Stage. Ashley in uh, Winchester. Winchester. Ashley Wells. Good job. And Harper's going to be in our commercials. Yay. And she's going to be in the warm-up shows. How many? Do you remember? Is she in all three? I think three? she's in Friday warm-up shows and Sunday's warm-up shows. Friday and Sunday. And we're just so excited to have her performing. Those shows are on the 10th, 11th, and 12th of August. You can get your tickets by calling 455-5321 or online at uh, southjackson.org. And I, Harper... What are you going to do when you get to be five years old? Um, oh, you dancing. can tell me. Tell me. Tell me what are you going to do when you're five? Will you still be dancing? You're four. Can Talk to her. Four. Oh, you're going to be, you're four now. Yeah. Well, are you going to keep dancing? Yeah. Yeah. Does your, does your mama dance? Does your brother dance? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now you've been holding out on us, <laughs> Hunter. I, I feel sure you could dance. I, I'll bet Harper could give lessons. All right, we're going to have to wrap it up. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. All right, folks, we're back, and I'm glad to have my buddy Lyle on here with us today from Parks and Rec because we are so fortunate in this town for so many things, but the fact that the city, our city does for us and brings us the type of entertainment and things they do through Parks and Rec, I just don't know if a whole lot of other towns do all the stuff that, that, that they do, and Lyle's right at the top of that top of that heap there in planning and getting this stuff out and getting the information out. We just appreciate what y'all do. Well, thank you. And, and when you. Blaine Curley, Mayor Curley, was on the other day, I asked him about Splash Island, and, you know, they had to fight. He had to fight for that. Oh, yeah. And it is an absolute huge success. Yeah, it's it's been very it busy this summer. It is a huge success. It's been very busy. And and a lot of people don't realize, a lot of the citizens out there might not realize that there is a there's a really good food venue down there. There is. There you is. don't have to, you know, if you're looking for somewhere different to go get something to eat and you're tired of going to the same old place, you don't, you don't have to swim mm -hmm. or right. get in a park. You can just go in the, the, the food place, the absolutely. food court there and eat. Absolutely. And the food's absolutely wonderful in that place. It is. It is really so good So congratulations stuff. for y'all. Thank you. All right. Well, what we got that. that's new and going on, Lyle? Well, one of the, the things I wanted to uh, bring to you guys today was a program we have coming up. Um, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen are very big on a Get Fit Tullahoma initiative. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I realize I don't look like the kind of person that's going to be around touting a fitness program. However, uh, uh, we have a... <laughs> if you do anything, just do something. That's right. You don't that's have right. to walk to Hawaii and back or to Mexico, you know, Panama City or back. That's right. That's right. Do anything. 
Well, we're going to have a program where you're going to get to do a little bit of something. Uh -huh. um, so this will be the fourth in our uh, walking series. We've done a walk across Tennessee. We've done a walk to the beach. We did walk to the state park. So this year's walking program is to walk the Appalachian Trail. Are you kidding so, me? No, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. How many miles is that? 2,158. 2,158 miles. We're going to go from Springer Mountain, Georgia, all the way to Mount Catadin in Maine, which is uh -huh. where it ends. So, uh, But of course, that's figurative. Uh, the way that the program works is you'll have a team of six, so you uh -huh. don't have to do it all by yourself. And there's other exercises that you can do besides walking and running. So, you know, if you're not much of a walker or you can't run, obviously, I'm, if I'm running, you better run too because something's chasing me. <laughs> but, uh, but I do like to swim. So, you know, swimming is included. So all of these exercises have a conversion to miles. Oh, well, that's great. And so your team captain will collect all your miles at the end of each week. And we're going to do this for six weeks starting in September, right after Labor Day. All right. Um, and so your team captain collects your miles. And then your team miles is what counts for how far you've gone along the trail. Okay. Question. Mm hmm and the other, we've had three other walks. Yes. Has any team totaled anywhere close to that mileage? Exceeded it. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Walk to the Beach uh, program that we did, the, the uh, second one. Right. Uh, that one's uh, it's just fresh in my mind. I know there's other ones that, that have gone a little bit further, but they did almost 2,000 miles from Tullahoma on a big circuit around through Florida and up through you know Georgia and, and to Myrtle Beach. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very attainable goal in six weeks, especially with a team of six. So. Well, I want to tell you, folks, you might think, you know, who, who in the world is interested in this? Who's going to do this? I was astounded the first year, and we were sitting in the football stadium, because this happens during football season as it well. Does, yeah. And I heard some people down in front of me talking about walking. Mm -hmm. And all, how many miles did you get this week? And they were, oh, we got this and that and the other. And all of a sudden, behind me, I hear this woman say to her husband, we're going to have to walk when we get home to keep up with them. <laughs> so that's yeah. how infectious this whole thing has oh, gotten. Yeah. It gets and it's a very competitive. competitive. Oh, yeah. It gets a little competitive, too. Very competitive. So I just think that's outstanding. Yeah, and the, one of the neat things about this, too, and there, there may be more now, but at one time, um, Tullahoma and Franklin were the only two cities in Tennessee that had the Healthier Tennessee Community designation. That's uh, great. Yeah, Governor Haslam has a great program for that, and uh, we, are, we earned it the first year. And uh, doing these walking programs and all these fitness programs that we do at Parks and Rec helps us keep that designation. There's grant money that goes along with it that we can use. Um, for example, I think part of that is being used to expand the Greenway now, uh, along with a, a diabetes grant that, that we receive. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of benefits to, to doing these programs, not just getting out and you know, getting healthy and, and trying to walk, but there's some benefits to the city as well. You know, for all the participants that we get, you know, it helps us a lot. Well, now, as, uh, as you go along the Greenway, is there a part of that that has some fitness stations on the Greenway? Not on the Greenway as, as it sits today. Now, there's a couple of other parks that we have okay. that do have um, some fitness machines, some outdoor fitness machines. Right. Uh, for example, at East Park, where the Arboretum is, right. uh, over behind East Middle School, the walking trail back there right. has an outdoor elliptical that gets a lot of use. We've had to fix yeah. that a couple of times yeah. because it gets so much use. Um, there is uh, a new park over off of Silver Street uh, mm -hmm. that, that has a few of those around a smaller walking trail. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's a lot, good. Of, a lot of places out there you can use. Well, I noticed that the Greenway is, they've, they've completed from down at the bottom below the old tannery, mm -hmm. down on, on Lincoln Street, right. and they've gone under the bridge, and right. they've gone down and come up to Grundy Street. Correct. And it's right now it's stopped right there. What's, mm -hmm. what's the plan from there to so, get back yeah. to... Uh, to the baseball fields and to the yep. library. So right now, the, the next segment is under construction that's right behind the library and the senior center. If you've driven down Collins Street recently, you may have seen it. Okay. Um, so uh, that will connect to the existing greenway uh, right there behind uh, the baseball fields at Cascade Park. Um, the fourth phase, which will connect the two, will go from right there uh, next to the library. It'll go down Collins Street and part of Grundy Street and connect to that other end. Um, and those areas are almost complete. There's still some landscaping and things that are going to be right, done on that. Right. But, but there, you could go walk on it. It's a short distance right now, but they will be connected pretty soon here. Well, and, and until that's done, I mean, you can walk on Collins Street. Absolutely. 
you know and now when it leaves when it leaves where the parking area is now mm -hmm. it's going to go back behind the shopping center there that's a long-term goal that's at some point yes yes right now we're just getting it downtown yeah and the idea will be is that once that part is is completed and starts to connect back there it'll go almost all the way to fair elementary oh it's wonderful and so there'll be plenty of parking especially during the summer when you know kids are out of school you can park back there and basically start at fair elementary and end up all the way at Tullahoma high school yeah that's good and, and that's go as far uh, as you want and that's yeah. so what that's probably it's probably three three miles five miles i think miles it's just over four miles yeah so that's great yeah that's great now We're what we need to, to do it. is get uh get uh go up there where it comes up to cedar lane and get get the parishes to complete that around the airport out there. Yeah, well, that, Wouldn't that, that would be, be great. That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be wonderful to do that. Hey, Lyle, thanks a lot for what you do and coming to see us. Anytime. And we appreciate you and know that you can come back and share this kind of stuff with us just anytime. Oh, how did the garden turn out? Oh, it's doing great. The, the garden's community doing good. Garden has a has a great turnout this year and they've Down got at a CD lot of good, stamps. At CD stamps. You can't see it right now. For the political side, yeah. But after Thursday, you can go down there. And it's check buried it out. behind some election signs right now. All right, folks. <laughs> we'll be back after these messages. It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green and recycle. Tullahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Jacob. I'm the Rooster. And I'm the Red Mate. And we would like to welcome you to Rooster Wear. Yes, Rooster Wear is a cottage industry producing accessories for men, women, children, babies, and pets. All items are hand cut and sewn locally. Rooster Wear specializes in bow ties, pocket squares, scarves, cufflinks, neckties, and aprons of all sizes for all ages. Baby products include onesies, diaper covers, bibs, and burp pads. All bow ties, tie it yourself, or pre tied come with an adjustable neckband. All products can be made with the material of your choice as special orders are available upon request. Don't be standing back looking at fashion. Create your own with Rooster Wear. Come visit us at roosterandredmaiden.com to find our handcrafted designs for the cock of the wall. <laughs> Hello everyone, John Rickman here. And this is Pat Welch, and John, we've hit one of the magic marks. We're at, this is installment number 20 number of the 20. conversation with John and Pat. Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, continue on with a song I did last time. In segment 19? Yeah, and this is about, this is Rocky Top, written by Felix and Boodle O'Brien. As I understand that they had been writing serious music, and they decided, let's, write something nonsensical. So they wrote Rocky Top and, and of all the other music which has been forgotten, this one still remains. <laughs> Once I had a girl on Rocky Top, half bear the other half cat. While as a mink but sweet as soda pop, I still dream about that. Woo, John. Lousy. I'm a, my father played at Alabama and, and uh, I'm an Alabama fan, but that that took that got my hair on my arms up. 
It, that little, put a little effort in that one. Well, I warmed up a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Well, we uh, we left off with the Majors family. We were last. in Lynchburg. Right. We were in Lynchburg. Put up picture number one again, please, Philip. Last week we talked about the Majors family, which of course was uh, the yes on the far right. Is Coach uh, Shirley Majors, who coached at Lynchburg and Huntland, very very successfully, both places. And then to his side, going uh, right to left, first is Johnny, who was the oldest and became the head coach at UT. Uh, next to him was Joe, uh, who became a quarterback at uh, Florida State, and then Bill, who we'll talk about even more today. Uh, he was an eighth grader in that picture. And then the next is Larry who played at Swanee for his daddy. And then on the far uh, left was Bobby, the youngest, who was probably the best of, of the athlete of, of the bunch. And uh, John, we talked about we, we would kind of concentrate on, on one segment today of the, of the Majors family, which is I want to talk about the 1965 uh, UT uh, season, and uh, which is there's there's going to be some uh, highlights in this uh, great times for UT and also some tragic times at UT and maybe I, in my way of thinking if, if success is defined by doing the very best you can with the cards you're dealt mm -hmm. to me 1965 may be UT's greatest football season of all time uh, this was coming after a period uh, after coach Nalen uh, retired UT struggled a little bit, and there were several coaches in between 1964 and when when and, uh, when uh, Coach Nalen retired. But uh, in '64, they wanted to, they were going to hire another coach, and, and they were going to get away from the single wing that had been used against them in recruiting several times. And they lost people, uh, great football players, and East Tennessee High School was one of them. Had been Steve Spur to Florida, and another one had been Steve Sloan to uh, mm -hmm. Alabama. And they thought they needed it was time to, to get away from the that Nayland part of the, of the Nayland's era. And uh, Coach, I believe Coach Woodruff was the uh, AD, and he hired a real young assistant off of Arkansas staff who was coached by Frank Broyles at the time, and he was considered the best developer of, of coaches. And in fact, it, on his staff also at that time was Johnny Majors. And there were some people that felt like maybe that Johnny should have been hired or somebody closer to the nailing tree but anyway they hired Doug Dickey and he came in 64 and they didn't win a lot I think they had didn't have a winning season and uh, people are still the jury's still out and they start the year off a lot a little bit better they beat Army and they beat South Carolina and they tied Auburn in the first three games uh, then start you know, it was early in the 60s as they do now, and now we're down to the third week of October, so it's Alabama time. They went to Birmingham, <clears throat> and the 1965 Alabama team became the national champion. And UT tied them 7-7 seven to seven that day. And um, at the end of the game, Alabama had the ball deep in UT territory for a chance to kick a field goal or a touchdown and, and win the game. And Snake Stabler, Kenny Stabler, who recently passed away, that was a great Oakland Raider quarterback. This was one of the first times he'd played. And on fourth down, he threw the ball out of bounds, tried to stop the clock. Somehow, the, there's all kinds of different stories of how that happened, but it did happen. UT tied the, what ended up becoming the national champion. The next day, being Sunday morning, uh, Bill Majors, that was showed in the eighth grade on that second picture, he, he and two other assistants uh, were going to work. They went to work real early in the morning on Sunday and uh, worked for a while, then went to church and then came back to work again. Uh, Philip, if you'll th show that other picture up, there's Bill Majors in the middle, and the assistants on the sides were one of them was Charlie Rash, I believe, and the other one was Bob Jones. And they, were, uh, they went to work together, and a, uh, one of the uh, assistants, uh, Volkswagen Beetle, and were somehow got hit by a train and all of them were killed instantly. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely a horrible time at, at uh, UT. They had a, an incredible memorial service in a Methodist church, I believe on Church Street in Knoxville. They had over, way over a thousand people there. Uh, there was some discussion about whether they could even finish the season and whether they were going to play on Saturday. 
and they end up decide they would play and uh, they played Houston and uh, they took uh, black crosses and put them on the power T. You could see a, the, at least the, the uh, horizontal part of the cross on the, on the helmet across that, the, the orange part of that, that T. And um, it was such a, a, a sad time. I, know, I wasn't but 11 years old time, but I can remember how, how affected the, the whole state was. The uh, UT band uh, before the games played a lot of different uh, songs, and they would, and they still to this day, I believe, march to the visitor side before uh, Tennessee takes the field and plays the other team's fight song as a salute to the visitors, that kind of thing. Well, all those they didn't do any of that before the game started. They played the entire time and 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 played church hymns, and it's such a solemn thing almost, you know. They end up beating Houston, kind of lethargic effort and uh, the next week they played uh, I believe they played Georgia Tech who was seventh in the country and they beat them by two touchdowns and that just it, it spurred them completely on. I really think that the tie in Alabama was a big part of, of uh, Coach Dickey's taking getting uh, Tennessee turn around but what a what a uh, I don't know how you could practice us talking earlier, John. I, you know, you could uh, the the emotional part trying to get over that be one thing, but without three assistants, I don't know how you could divide up to practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, how that had to be one of the greatest coaching jobs of all time to get everybody. They wound up eight, one, eight, and eight, two. one and two. They that uh, if somebody asked for a, a trivia question of when uh, Tennessee would have tied both Alabama and Auburn in the same year. Or when they would have tied Alabama being national champion, the answer is all the same, 1965. And uh, Bill Majors, uh, for people that like to check local history out, he was buried in Lynchburg, where he was where he was raised, and I believe that he was born there. If you go to the city cemetery, you don't have to look around much. There's a a, a, a nice headstone for the, the Majors on it, the Majors family, and Shirley Majors, the, the Swanee wow. coach, he's buried there, and Bill Majors is is buried there, and he's only. 28 or 29, a tragic time, but a really great time that, in UT history. That was a good story, yeah. Pat. We appreciate sharing that. And we've been signaled that our time is about up. 20th has, has, has come and gone, but it will not be the last, we hope. Unless. Unless production says so, but we're hoping we can go to 21. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. I'm Gary Cordell, your Coffee County Mayor. I want to speak to you personally about the commitment I made to the citizens of Coffee County four years ago that if elected, I would serve our county with honor and integrity. I pledge to work hard to give 100%, to be effective and efficient in managing your county resources. I want to take this opportunity to assure the citizens of Coffee County that our county's financial condition is much stronger now than it was four years ago. We've had no property tax increase in the last four years and our operating reserve fund balance has tripled. The most important question you must ask yourself when you walk into the voting booth is simply, who's best qualified to lead our county forward at this critical time? I have over 40 years of business, management, and leadership experience to best lead Coffee County. Much has been accomplished in the last four years, but we've only just begun. Coffee County, let's stay on track. I would appreciate your vote in the August 2nd general election. Thank you. We're back. Glad to be back. Tell you what we're going to do right now is we're going to talk with Ken from the from the Telehoma Air Foilers. Is that coffee, what it is? Coffee, coffee, coffee County. Coffee, coffee Air Foilers. Foilers. There yes. you go. Coffee Air Foilers. Like I shouldn't know that as many times as you come. Uh, I had to ask Ken. I said, Ken, what's your name? He said, I've been here three times. And I said, I don't make any difference. What's your name? <laughs> Uh, names sometimes <laughs> slip away. Yeah, they do. Faces yeah, they stay do. forever. Faces stay forever. Tell us about what's going on. I love this. Uh, I, I love this piece right here. Well, that's a control line uh, back from the 60s. That's a retro. It's got a Cox uh, Golden B049 on it, and you fly it control now, line. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're talking to people who don't know what you're talking about. 
Well, what is a Cox that Golden B49? Is that, that a, was, is that a that's, motor that's or that's the a motor. Wing? That's the motor on the front of it. Okay. Uh, back in the 60s, they were. Dumb it down for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> back in the 60s, Cox made airplanes and motors, and uh, they made up through the 70s. They've out of business since then. Uh, but we'd still have a lot of people out there who have these motors and still fly them. This is a control line. You fly it on a handle with two wires and it goes out and you have up and down and that's it. So you can do rollovers and loops and fly around in a circle till gas runs out right, and you land right, it. Right, right. Do okay. it all over again. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It was cheap to get into. It's still cheap and easy to get into it. The kits are cheap. The, if you can find the motors laying around at swap shops and that for $5. So you've been building for how long? Oh, I've been building model airplanes since uh, I was in Scouts when I was eight years old, about 1963. 63? Mm-hmm. You've been building a long time. I've been building a long time. Got a lot of cuts to show for it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking him a minute ago, how many, how many planes do you have? Uh, I've built hundreds of planes. I've crashed a lot of them. Uh, you learn as you go on and you crash and destroy them and rebuild and do another one and advance from small control line stuff up to radio control and you learn more stunts and more things to do with it and you just advance and to where you want to be. Everyone has a point to <coughs> a where point they want to get to. Be. Now this, this bi wing down here that is a what that is a foam that's all foam it's uh it's all foam it comes pre-made pre-painted you just got to kind of assemble it it is electric powered it uh, runs a, a lithium polymer battery pack in it it'll fly for uh, four to five minutes on a, on a full battery pack and then you got to take it out and put a new one in put a new one in, a new one in. Uh, that is fully aerobatic it'll do 3d what's called 3d maneuvers it'll hover it'll depends on the ability of the pilot okay is what it is now is it relatively light oh that's extremely light extremely well how does, light. how does wind how does wind affect well that particular thing that is it looks like it's lighter you're looking than some other you know stuff. I, I, five to ten mile an hour winds you're okay with above that it's going to be a little hard not to fly it to land it mm -hmm. the in the air part's the easy the, getting it down. Getting it down is the hard part because <laughs> being so light, they're going to float a lot. Yeah. When you build an airplane that's wood, it's going to be something like that. Uh, Sig had a biplane out uh, called a Skybolt that was about that size. It would take a 0.6 cubic inch nitro motor in it. Uh, and that one weighed about 9, 10 pounds. Uh, this one weighs? That one weighs about a pound and a half, two pounds. A lot of difference. A big difference, yeah. big difference. But it would handle differently in the wind. Sure. But it wouldn't do the maneuvers that this one's able to do because of power to weight ratios. Right. So y you give up something to gain something. I understand. Okay? And when we have guys that can do things that these are, you, defy gravity. Right, right. Defy gravity. All right, so you were as we were talking earlier, you told me that you got into this because what you enjoyed most was the building. Oh, the building, the building. And there's still a lot and of people out there that that's back when you were build. building out of sticks. Well, yeah, you buy a yeah. box of balsa yeah. and a set of plans, and some of it would be die cut already. You'd have to punch out and clean it up, and then yeah. you'd build it over a set of plans. And it would take you to build an airplane a couple months yeah. to get it totally built, well, ready well, to fly. Well, yeah. And so when you took it out to fly it, when you crashed it, <laughs> you you knew how to repair it, but yeah, it was going to take you built you weeks it. to repair it. But again. you built it, right. So you could repair it. Oh sure. Now I was telling him I uh, I bought a plane for Jacob, my son, and I to build, and and we got through the building part of the sticks. Mm -hmm. And you know I think we both sort of lost interest in that. I think it was time to pick up a ball. And do something with a ball. Mm -hmm. You know, it's either baseball starter or football starter yeah. or something. So the time allotted to do that was gone. And uh, we hung it just as a front, just as a the, the stick frame. Yeah. And I thought it was really pretty cool to, just that it was hanging, the framing was mm -hmm. hanging. So when you build them like that, you know how to repair them. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you when get you a little buy more enjoyment one out already of it finished, you don't know how to repair it. So you well, have to buy another part. Sometimes or something. you have to learn. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Well, what's this? What's this baby right here? Well, that here? one there is a rocket-powered glider, and, and this weekend, or coming up the 11th, we have our Model Aviation Day. It's open to the public, and what we're going to do is we're going to display everything that we fly: rockets, gliders, control line, um, 3D flying, helicopters, everything. 
and a couple of friends are coming up and we're going to have rockets up there and this is a rocket powered glider. What we're going to do is we're going to launch that on a rocket motor. It's going to go about three, four hundred feet in the air and then radio control glide it to back to a landing. Okay. And that's kind of like a shuttle. We've got another guy coming out that's going to have one that looks like the Klingon battleship. All looks right. Like Klingons. Klingon battleship. So we'll have those up there. We'll be giving flight lessons all day long, free, to anybody who wants to try this out, uh, take up a trainer and experience flight. Um, we'll have concessions there. We're going to have a raffle there. And all everything we take in from this weekend is going to the DVA, the Disabled Veterans. Thank you for administration. that. Administration. Okay. Thank you so for that. Make, those, uh, guys, we'll, those guys we'll right need all the help they can get. Uh, it goes directly to them. It goes locally. It doesn't go to the national. It goes, stays right here in Coffee County. Wonderful. Wonderful. Question. Sure. Have you ever flown? Yes. Actually, are yes. you a pilot? No. But you have. No. But a buddy of mine uh, had a set, has a Cessna 172, uh -huh. yeah. and we do go up and fly that, and I have flown it. Okay. Have, I've have done you ever been? In a, have it. you ever been in a glider? Because you mentioned yes. glider. Yes. Yeah. You know, we had at one time we had a very active glider group in Tallahoma mm -hmm. that would go up uh, the other side of of uh, oh on the way to Eagleville that landing strip up there. There's a big glider field mm -hmm. up there. And uh, well, I just wonder, have you ever been, have you ever been well, in a glider? Yes. Uh, being from Chicago, we used to glide at some called McLeod Field. Okay. And it was a big glider field up there. And we'd go I up there. I think that would be pretty cool because there's no the sound. First, the first Is time. Right? It's yeah, just the if, wind? Well, no, you, there's sound of the wind. But the first time you do it, you're, you're kind of experiencing it because you don't have a motor in front of you. Yeah. It's a little different. It's a little different. But it is still, you can still do a lot of things with a glider. Yeah. In fact, the speed record for model airplanes is held by a glider. Over well, five. On the way over, down to No, no, they do. They do slope soaring and they do slope soaring and it's, it's over 500 miles an hour. A model airplane. Wow. With a glider. All right, give us the information on your event one more time. Okay, this uh, on the 11th we're having our model aviation day. Uh, the mayor has proclaimed that as Model Aviation Day with a proclamation. Wonderful. He'll be out there that day with it. Wonderful. Um, we're going to have the base commander out there, of course, because we do fly off the base. Right. He'll be visiting us that day, and we'll be demonstrating all kinds of flight, from rockets, gliders, to RC uh, airplanes. We'll be giving demo flights. If you want to come out there and, and try this out, we'll have instructors out there all day long with the instructor aircraft taking you up. Uh, for right. instructor aircraft. So that's an all-day event this Saturday. The weekend after that is our giant scale event. Okay. Now we'll all get the that the next. We're out of time. Okay. We'll get that the next time I'll you come. Be okay. back. Okay. Ken. Thank you very Coffee much. Coffee County gliders, airfoilers. Go see it. Enjoy flight. <laughs>
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we had the opportunity to meet with Vernita Davis, the Coffee County Voting Commissioner and uh, Election Commissioner, and she's going to give us a little insight on this Thursday's election process. Here today with Vernita Davis, Administrator of Elections in Coffee County. Can you tell us uh, how elections look for Thursday? Elections are looking great for Thursday. Early voting is over. It ended Saturday, and we. As of 12 o'clock noon Saturday, we had 6,074 voters. Okay, and how is that compared to uh, past elections? Uh, it's a little higher than it was in 2014, which compares to the same election that we're having now. There were uh, just barely over 5,000 for that election, so we, we gained about 1,000 people. Okay, well that's great. Um, and uh, what time can, can voters get out on Thursday and start voting? Okay, the polls will open at 8 o'clock and they will close at 7. And we ask that anyone who comes to vote to please bring their uh, Tennessee State or a federal photo ID with them. If they have their voter registration card, that's great, but it is not necessary to vote. Okay. And uh, how many precincts are there exactly in the county? 23 precincts scattered across the county. Uh, there are four Manchester City, eight Tullahoma City, and the rest of them are rural. Okay. And how, how do people, uh, I've heard that the machines have changed this year. Is there, is there a big change or, or will the voters mostly notice? Or? The new machines are wonderful. Okay. I have to say, I really, I really am proud that Coffee County has the new voting machines they have. The, they, they are a two-part machine. The, f the first part that the voter will go to is a lot like the old machine as far as being touch screen, uh, but it will print them out a sheet of paper that they can physically in their hand hold telling them exactly who they voted for. And then they will, before they leave the precinct, they have to scan that through a scanner and that is what counts their vote. Okay. Is, and why did why was there a change, I guess, for the, in the machines? Well, the state is telling us that in, in uh, 2020 that every state will have to have a paper trail. Okay. So this leaves us a paper trail because uh, any, anything that has to do with state voting or county voting has to be held for 22 months in, in storage. So these paper ballots that, these, these paper ballots that come through uh, that the voter is looking at, they have to be stored in our back room for 22 months. So that way, if there is a down the road a court case or something, we still have the ballots to prove that okay. it is what it is. Paper's probably a little more stable than a computer chip to yes. stack away just in yeah. case. So, okay. Um, and so your position, I'm just curious, I've never seen your name on the ballot. Are you in an appointed position or do you have to run occasionally? I am appointed. Oh, okay. I am appointed. I have a commission made up of five, five people right now. It's three Republican and two Democrat commissioners and I am appointed. And I'm appointed every two years, the first, the first week in April, in odd years. Okay. So, uh, so really I'm here just, you know, two years at a time. But I have been I have been in the election commission. I started in 1995, and so that's. And, but I have been the administrator for eight years now. Okay. And how do uh, how do people how do you get the returns from the from the polls? Are they sent in some way, or how does they, that happen? The poll workers has to bring them in. Uh, they're on a thumb drive, so they will they after the polls close and they can shut down the machines then. Uh, they get the thumb drive from the machines and they bring them in securely. It takes two poll workers to bring them in. Um, and then we um, have a computer in the back room that we, we plug them all in and it, it 
automatically gets the totals off of the thumb drives. Okay. Uh, now, I remember last year there was there was a little uh, hiccup with the system. Can, do you know? Do you remember what happened with that, or why things were delayed a little bit? <clears throat> there was uh, there was a case that uh, the computer in the in the old machines we had um, a file that we had to rename okay. right in the middle of of, ch of getting the returns and whenever we renamed that file it didn't hold i mean we just took the same file name and added the two to the end of it mm -hmm. and it did not save it and so that's what and then so then we had to go back and rename it again and figure and, out and, how, and, what it was <laughs> then it worked okay all right so so with the new system do, you won't have to no. do that anymore? no okay all right great no okay well, thank you very much for speaking to us, well, and uh, hopefully everything goes smoothly on Thursday night. I hope so, too. <laughs> Thanks. Looking forward to it. Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. Hello, this is Janie Price. When my husband Ray Price would tour across the country, his favorite place to dine was Cracker Barrel Old Country Store locations. His favorite thing to order was the Uncle Herschel. And the beauty of it all is forever, you'll be holding me too. I miss Ray dearly, and I'm so proud that his last album, Beauty Is, the final session, is available at his favorite restaurant. A love affair. The project includes a duet with Martina McBride and harmony vocals from Vince Gill. Ray believed this to be the best recording he had ever made. Oh, I wish I was 18 again. I think you'll agree when you pick up your copy of Beauty Is The Final Sessions at a Cracker Barrel Old Country Store location near you or at crackerbarrel.com. you that's sick and tired of my face. I have brought this beautiful person on the set today, Samantha Waters. She is my yes. assistant director and does a fabulous job. Samantha, how are you today after never getting any sleep? <laughs> I'm doing great and we love to see your face all over town, Peggy, and especially at the South Jackson Civic Center where you've made such a big impact. Well, because, of, us. because of you, I'm still standing <laughs> and we're getting a show together. It's going to be are. Fantastic! It is. It's the 39th year of South Jackson Goes Country. And I don't know about you, but I know my mother-in-law, this is her favorite show. Oh, I'm really? in all different shows in <laughs> the year. That's wonderful. But this is her favorite one. She looks forward to it every year. That's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's usually, it's always, to me, a lot of fun. It is. Uh, sometimes a big sigh of relief when it's over, but... <laughs> I, and That's every I, show. That's and every sometimes show. I have a few tears because I'm leaving people that I probably won't see for another year. Let's run down the the, okay. the dates and the times and so everybody will have it in their head. All right, so the show is three days and it's a different show every day. And we do it August the 10th, 11th, and 12th. So Friday and Saturday we have an outside show and barbecue that you can buy and enjoy. It's at 6 o'clock. And then at 7 o'clock, we have a pre-show, which involves a lot of our pre-teens that sing and dance. And then at 7.30, the main show starts on Friday, Saturday. 
Sunday we do not have the outside event, right. but we do have a pre-show that starts at 1.30 and also the main show starts at 2 o'clock. And uh, any barbecue that's left will still mm -hmm. be for sale. Yes, and it's from Piggy's Place, so and it's great barbecue. And they're one of barbecue. our uh, on-stage sponsors and have yes. been for many years, and we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I, I always have fun doing the Piggy's commercial. That's <laughs> yes. It and that's opens one our thing. show. Yeah. We do commercials in the show, and they're live. So it has live actors. Some of them change each night, but a lot of it involves comedy. Exactly. And so you get a little bit of uh, Hoot and Nanny in between yeah. all the singers, and we thank those sponsors. Can we, we couldn't possibly do it name you. those 12 yes. sponsors? Uh, we have Piggy's Place Barbecue. We have Stroop's AC. We also have Woodard's Diamonds and Design, Clayton Shoe Store, Mike Long's Dentistry, and we have Sundrop. Now that covers Act 1. Right. And then Act 2, we have Brown's Tree and Stump. We have Mid-State Piano Gallery. And then we have Rustic Lantern, Merle Norman, Tech ER, and I that feel like I'm missing Weikert. Weikert, Weikert Realtors. Realtors. Yes. And thank them uh, mm -hmm. very much. And along with a lot of other sp sponsors that will show up in the program. Yes. It's we have folks who help us with t-shirts, the program, all of that. And, and we couldn't we're do it without very appreciative. You. Yes. Uh, you are actually in the show. I am. Directing a lot of the stuff and then performing in the show. What's your favorite song that you're doing? Oh dear, my favorite song. I know you're doing Arlington. You're, you, you're in the Songwriter Showcase. I have showcase. to say it's probably the Songwriter Showcase. We started something new this year. We've had songwriters in the show for a long time. But we haven't but featured this year, a segment. Yes, we're featuring them in Act 2. And we're doing it sort of like a writer's round. You're going to have a couple songwriters in one grouping. And we have people playing piano, guitar. Uh, we have some different bands that are going to do it. And it's just something about songwriting. It's so personal. And being able to share something that means so much to you. It's just, it's touching. And I hope it touches people who I are I think there. it will. And I, I, one thing that I've noticed is when someone writes something themselves, they're often shy to share it yes. because they're afraid <laughs> it won't be accepted. But mm -hmm. I think we've crossed that barrier. I think so. I think on the country show, people are proud to show yes. what they can do. We have Jay Four coming back from Franklin. Mm -hmm. He's still at Belmont University, does a great job. I think he's on the Saturday show. I could have that. Yes, I'm pretty sure it is. And uh, I can't name all the songwriters, but we have some great ones. I need to remind you that we have a bluegrass band we do. on on Sunday. Sunday, that's mm -hmm. a Horse Mountain band. Oh, they're wonderful. And then on Friday night, as an as a special guest, we have Steve West and the Funky Cowboys from Manchester, and they are also outstanding. Yes, and the thing is, is that each show is different, and so Sunday has a lot more bluegrass and some gospel. gospel songs, and then Friday is a lot of upbeat modern country, and so there's just a good mix throughout the shows, there and we is. also have a Grand Old Opry segment in every show, and so we have to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yes. They were going to bring the, what are those guys, I'm calling them the gloom and doom guys. The gloom guys. and doom guys, <laughs> but the guys from Hee Haw. Yeah. Yes. We're so. bringing them we're kind of pulling that from the old Opry show. Have you ever yep. seen an Opry show? Yes, I have. I got to see Alison Krauss a long time ago. Fabulous. She was phenomenal. She sang a cappella for like three or four minutes, never missed a note. I love her voice. Oh, I do I too. think she's a wonderful voice. First Opry I ever, and only Opry show I ever saw. Oh. I've seen one. I was in high school, and here's the thing that impressed me. I, I paid more attention to what was sitting on the side of the stage. <laughs> The performers would come out in the middle, and over here on the right was a set of stair step seating, and there would be wives and children on the floor playing with their cars oh. or throwing a ball. And wow. that was, it was very, you know, and that was at the old Opry house. Real the life. doors were open, everybody's fanning. And uh, that was kind of a fun thing. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Well, I think you bring that out in South Jackson Coast oh, Country. Yeah, we try to do a little we bit do. of everything. In fact, I think we're producing a fan this year. Oh, have, you seen, have you seen it? We, I have not we seen it. We introduced it last week at the at the ice cream social, oh, and it good. just pops out of a little little <laughs> thing about this big, and opens up, and it's oh, a wow. it's a fan. Yeah, that's awesome. I know, and we're going to be selling those. I think a few of our performers will be selling their CDs also. Oh yes, which is mm -hmm. good. Definitely. And uh, when it comes to writing, I've got to compliment you because you have that intuition about what's going to work on stage. You have helped us write some fabulous <laughs> commercials. Well, thank you. And not, not everybody thinks that way. You know, there's Lynn Seaborn, oh, Melissa Sharan, 
uh, Mike Sneed and uh, Greg Gressel, and yes. we, we all kind of throw our ideas out there when it comes to commercials, and it, it works somehow. We have a blast during those sessions, okay. and the thing is, is it's, it's like you said, everybody's different, and the way that they come at and approach an event is different, and we make something wonderful because of it. <laughs> no, we build off of each other. Fun. We couldn't do it by ourselves. No, mm -hmm. you really can't. I think no. uh, when you learn to do something in a group and share ideas, I mean, you sometimes you just throw an idea out and then the other people will make it grow into something yes. that works. Exactly. And can we remind people about how to get tickets? Oh, yes. Okay, absolutely. so tickets are $15 in advance or they are $17.50 at the door. If you want to get them in advance, you can go to southjackson.org or you can call the number on the screen, 931-455-5321. And you want to make sure you get your tickets because this is probably the most popular show at South Jackson or at least it, one of the it's, most. It certainly has been for a lot of years and uh, the, the reason for that, I don't know. Well, I think it's because there's fun. so many people involved, yeah. and it is, it's a comedy musical, essentially, with modern music and classics. I love the fact that we do have online tickets, because yes. standing in line is not a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. If you have your tickets in your hand when you walk in the door, well, you can <laughs> go in and have a seat, and I like that. I think we can seat 400 and something people. So come and, on out, uh, and we can we, feed you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's always great. And I'm always overwhelmed at how cheap it is. Yes. Inexpensive. I've got to quit using the word cheap. We do nothing cheap, right? Mm -hmm. We're, exactly. It's just inexpensive. And it's a right. great night and, and wonderful fun. Have I mentioned Miss Jacqueline Sullinger Painter, who does our choreography? She's amazing. She I couldn't love be here today because of work, but she is wonderful and she's done a great job with all the pre show. She folks, really has. And Lindsay Seaborn. And with the dancing, and Lindsay Seaborn has mm -hmm. taken over in Martha Brooke Powers. Yes. Hood's place. <laughs> yes. Martha Brooke got married. We got to go. We could have talked here all day. I know. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> Come see us. South Jackson Ghost Country, August 10th through the 12th. We'll be back with more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the paint. Uh oh, I just knocked the tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now you know what a color wheel is. It is the wheel that the paint works, where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a underarm fan. You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat. You know, they do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David, David Eichenen over there. And he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today, Martin Senor. See, Martin Senor, right there. Martin Senor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Oh, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org.
Peggy, we got one minute, and we just want to thank everybody for watching. Remember, South Jackson goes country. Remember the airfoilers and all that stuff that's going on. Your parks and rec. Get out there and walk. Exactly. I think that's a fabulous it's thing. It's a wonderful thing, and this community has bought into it. They really have, and it makes a I big think difference I think in there's the over 600 people, Peggy, that and did if, that. And if people keep that up, we won't have to have so many more doctors. There you go. We'll there you go. That'll help the hospital staff. I tell you what, this past weekend at King's, at King's Cross Church and Christ Community Church held a joint congregational picnic and worship band concert at Wagner Park. And that was last weekend. And our man Philip Scoggins was there. And we're, that's how we're going to close the show today. Get yourself a little religion here. Have we're going to have a praise band. See you next time.